for the seismic moment you have to again calculate the for seismic stress you need to calculate the seismic moment first so here the seismic moment is approximately given by the formula which is given here so this is the formula taken from the design code so remember that in uh, all this vessel design there are different uh, design codes and uh, approaches which are followed by different uh, engineering consultancy firms so you may find a difference in the approaches but the basic philosophy remains same uh, in the calculation of wind or seismic uh, moments so here the approach which i am explaining or both the approaches which i explained are in general followed but they are not uh, something which are uh, pure theory theoretically derived uh, formula they are having some correction factors which are defined in different codes in a different manner so some codes may take more rigorous approach and some may take like for example the seismic calculation what we are do doing here is highly simplified version if you want more accurate calculation there are more uh, rigorous methods which are available obviously we will not be covering that so remember that this approach is uh, for the classroom discussion to understand the essential uh, philosophy uh, behind these calculations and the actual calculations will be more lengthier and more thorough than what we are discussing okay so the seismic moment is given by the expression which is given here it includes three factors the first one is known as seismic coefficient c so in the seismic calculation essentially what we are doing is unlike wind here the seismic load is assumed to be acting at the mass center of the vessel so we should know where the mass center is acting and then the moment of this force from the mass center is uh, considered as the base moment which is used for the design one can also go by the uh, section method so you can divide the vessel into various sections calculate cg and calculate seismic force at every location because the weight may not be uniformly distributed so this cg approximation is uh, may not be good so in that case the uh, uh, design method will be little more uh, involved here we are doing a simplistic approach so a single formula gives you total base moment so c is a seismic coefficient the seismic coefficient is defined in this particular table it is function of two things in every uh, geographical region there are zones are defined from seismic design point of view so there are different ways of defining the seismic zones so here i am taking again a simple uh, classification that is mild zone moderate zone and severe zone there can be zones like zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 and so on so considering there are three zones and since we are talking about uh, the ground vibration so again the dynamic response of the system is what gets accounted for which is represented by the period of vibration which we have calculated using a formula a empirical formula in the previous slide so in the same uh, manner you will be the same number you will be using here so depending on the value of period of vibration and the zone which you are looking at you can calculate the seismic coefficient as given in the table so this table will be provided to you in the exams the second factor is c is the one factor w so w is the weight of the vessel so for seismic calculation you will be considering the highest weight to be considered and h is the total height of the vessel so this total height includes from ground to the topmost point of the vessel so that is the h which is considered for this particular calculations once you get the total seismic moment similar to the wind calculations you calculate moment divided by the section modulus gives you the bending stress which is again positive and negative just like wind uh, stresses the seismic stresses are also uh, maximum at the uh, the tensile and compressive occur at the diametrically opposite points and the direction of the seismic force is again random so all locations are critical for stress point of view so what we have done is we have calculated stress because of the dead weight the stress because of the seismic moment and stress because of the wind moment since we are uh, considering an approach where both wind and seismic will not be occurring together 
we'll have to consider higher of the wind stress or seismic stress and consider them consider one of them and add it to the dead weight stress so for maximum compressive you will be adding the compressive stress from bending to the compressive stress from uh, dead weight and in tensile you will be subtracting the dead weight compressive stress from the maximum bending tensile stress once you have done the basic skirt design so using that approach you can calculate what is the thickness of the skirt and uh, uh, that is uh, determined first next we have to determine what should be the size of base plate so we should know what is the thickness of the base plate which is given here by the formula tb so in order to calculate the base plate thickness we'll be using an approach which involves the total compressive stress at the bottom of base plate so just consider that uh, you are having your skirt which is defined by this point and you are also having your base plate which extends beyond the skirt and to some extent inside the skirt and then you are having uh, the anchor bolts on the base plate so where it will be anchored so what you see here in the red color is the skirt and what you see in the blue color so this is the base plate that you see here and the base plate has got bolt holes so which are represented by uh, the position there and we want to know what is the thickness of this uh, blue plate so in order to do this uh, what uh, we are doing here is uh, we will calculate first the compressive stress because of the dead weight so that is directly given by w by a and we will also calculate the maximum bending stress so again we are considering here compressive so earlier case we calculated the a and z for the skirt so in this case we have to do those calculations for this uh, blue plate so for this blue region what is the value of a and what is the value of z is that what we have to calculate so here a is the area of this blue plate and z is also the area of the the section modulus of the blue plate so area of the base plate the total area of the base plate would be given by pi by 4 times db square where db is the outside diameter of the base plate minus dsk square so we are ignoring the portion which is there inside so this particular part is ignored for the calculation of uh, the base plate design so we are considering only the portion which is beyond the skirt is effective and that is what is considered so the area of the base plate is given by the first formula and the section modulus for the base plate is given by pi by 32 times uh, the formula which is given here so they are the plane formula from strength of materials for uh, hollow circular cross sections the idea what uh, we are doing here is we are assuming that when the wind moment is wind or seismic moment is acting a part of uh, your skirt uh, will have very high compressive stresses so we'll have very high compressive stresses acting on a particular region and that is what is getting calculated by this formula m by z will give you the highest stress which occurs in the skirt and the first part is the uniform so this w by a is the force which is going to act everywhere so w by a is the stress which is uniform at all points so this compressive stress because of dead weight plus the stress which is coming because of the bending they are both added together so addition gives you the highest stress which will act on the foundation which is uh, generally made up of concrete unless you are resting on steel support so you have to see that this maximum compressive stress is compared against the allowable compressive stress of concrete foundation which is typically 5 to 20 mpa so 
you are having 5 to 20 MPa as the allowable compressive stress. So you have to limit the Fc which is calculated within the uh, 20 MPa stress. And the thickness of the skirt is given by the empirical formula which uh, is given in terms of the L which is the projection of base plate beyond the skirt. So this value has to be assumed for doing the calculations. Fc which we have calculated earlier. So Fc is coming from there and Fb. So Fb is the allowable stress for base plate. So typically this is a steel plate. So for steel whatever allowable stress you are considering. So yield strength by some factor of safety would be the Fb. So using this formula you can calculate what is the thickness of base plate and that is how the, uh, the design of base plate the basic design of base plate will be completed. The remaining uh, part is deciding the size and number of anchor bolts. So that is what we are going to see next. Okay, so here we are looking at the design of the anchor bolts. In the anchor bolt design, what we are doing is, uh, okay, imagine this is the base plate which I am drawing here. So this is my base plate. And consider that wind or seismic force is acting from left to right. So when it is acting from left to right, so this is wind force or seismic force, whichever is uh, causing higher moment. Because of this force, a moment will be acting because of which the left part, the left zone will be uplifted. So this is the region which will be uplifted and the right hand part will be compressed down. So anchor bolts uh, will not be necessary, theoretically will not be necessary if uh, the entire vessel is remaining uh, compressive. So remember that in addition to this force, there is one more dead weight force is acting which is causing uniform uh, compressive stress. So if the stress, the tensile stress which is caused by wind and seismic moment is more than the stress, compressive stress caused because of the dead weight, you will have a zone where the stresses would be tensile. So we would then require the anchor bolts to avoid this upliftment. So wherever the base plate has tensile stress, it indicates that the base plate is trying to move away from the foundation. We don't want that, so that job would be done by means of these anchor bolts. So how do we do that is uh, we first consider that uh, this entire uh, base plate is uh, as if glued to the concrete foundation. So we assume that it is stuck to the foundation and then we will calculate what is the maximum stress at the base plate. The similar to the calculation what we did earlier. Now, uh, so you will calculate the bending stress which is given by the equation which is given here. So it is m divided by z where z is the section modulus of this uh, base plate which we previously calculated. And uh, if the dead weight was not there, definitely you will require anchor bolts because this uh, the point A which I am drawing here will be definitely will get uplifted if dead weight was not there. If dead weight is there, then the upliftment uh, may not be there because if the dead weight is sufficiently high, then the net stress at this point that is the W by A stress which is opposite to that of the other side may be sufficient to cause this particular point to remain stuck with the ground. So in that case again the anchor bolts will be required. Anchor bolts would be required if this particular combination gives you net tensile stress. So if FBT which is this term is greater than zero that is if it is positive the vessel has tendency to overrun and then the anchor bolts would be required to be designed. 
Now there is one important point which uh, you should notice here is this formula has got a term which is slightly different. So earlier we were using the term W A. In this formula you will find the term W min is used. So W min is the minimum operating weight of the vessel. So vessel may be operating in different uh, conditions. So during operation the vessel weight may be different. So when under full catalyst condition the vessel weight will be something for example and when the catalyst is uh, added or removed or some uh, process fluid is level is higher or lower the vessel weight will increase or decrease. So for calculation of the anchor bolts we the worst situation would be when the vessel is lighter. So when the vessel is lighter it will have more tendency to get overturned because it cannot oppose the upliftment which is uh, caused by the wind or, wind or seismic moments. So in this particular calculation to uh, design the anchor bolts we consider the minimum weight. So in the design problems you will get uh, or any vessel design you will have two uh, design weights. So one is the operating weight maximum operating weight and another would be minimum operating weight. So for anchor bolt design you have to remember that you have to use the minimum anchor bolt because that is where the anchor bolts will be uh, maximally stressed. So if you do this calculation and find that there is a tendency of vessel to get uplifted indicated by Fb being higher and remember that W mean has to be the minimum weight that you have to consider. You will calculate the value of Fbt. In order to calculate the size of the bolts, so this uh, size of bolt calculations you require how many number of bolts you are using. So the number of bolts is approximated by the formula given here. So it is pi multiplied by diameter of skirt divided by 600. So you will get the n value and just like the flange design you will consider multiples of 4 in order to get uniform uh, tightening sequence for the base plate anchors you will be uh, making this number rounded to the nearest multiple of 4. Now load on the anchor bolt is given by this particular formula. So let's understand this formula. So what we are doing here is uh, we are considering this uh, skirt to be divided into number of zones depending on how many anchor bolts you are giving. So if you are giving certain number of anchor bolts you can equally divide. So we will have for each anchor bolt you will consider a particular zone. So this area would be total area divided by number of bolts. So that is what appears in this formula. So this A by N is the area which is uh, spanned by that particular anchor bolt or the anchor bolt has a hold on that much area A divided by number of total area of the skirt plate divided by number of bolts and the maximum stress what we calculated uh, earlier so it is acting actually at one spot but we are considering it it is acting on this entire uh, area on which the anchor bolt has the hold. So the area multiplied by the stress will give you the total force that that particular anchor bolt has to withstand. So the other anchor bolts need not be, it appears that other anchor bolts would not be needed to be designed to that level. But if you think little it will become clear that since the both wind and seismic forces are random any of the anchor bolts can become critical depending on the direction. So hence all anchor bolts are to be design, are to be of the same size. So once you know the size of anchor bolt you can uh, calculate the size. Uh, once you know the magnitude of the anchor bolt force you can calculate the size of anchor bolt to withstand that particular force. So that is this force divided by core, core area of bolt should be less than the allowable stress of the bolt. So that is how you will be designing the anchor bolt. So we have seen three calculations for the skirt. So one is the calculating thickness of the cylindrical part of the skirt. The second is the base plate thickness of the skirt and the third is the number and size of anchor bolts. So we'll illustrate this procedure by means of an example which we'll take next.